dy dx equals 1 over 2x to the quanti uh, quantity cubed. An initial condition looks like this. It says y of some initial x value equals some initial y value. That's what that says. And here's what I'm going to give you. This looks pretty complicated, but here's what it says in, in real life. It'll give you like something, y of 1 is 0. That's what it would be. Can you tell me, what is your x coordinate here? What's your x? The 0 or the 1? The 1. The y would be the 0. This says, when you plug in 1, you get out 0. Does that make sense to you? That's what that says. So, can you first undo the derivative? Secondly, can you use this to solve for c? That's the two parts of our problem. So, firstly, can you do that for me? Can you do that? Go for it. If the derivative of y is 1 over 2x to the third, we need to undo that derivative. That's the integral. That's the antiderivative idea. So what we want is to undo this thing. Tell me maybe the first thing that you would do. Make it fit the table. You could. You'd have to be very careful with that. I'll show you both ways here, okay? Be very careful on how you handle this. Option one is bring the bottom to the top right now. Right? Right? Okay. Yes, that's right. If you do this, you can't take the integral yet. You cannot do it. What you would have to do is Split that off. But you're going to get not 2 to the third, you're going to get 2 to the negative third over x to the negative, I'm sorry, times x to the negative third dx. Do you see that? How it doesn't go to 8. That's actually 1 eighth. Do you see what I'm talking about? It's not 8, it's 1 eighth. So be careful on that. You get 1 eighth x to the negative 3. That one you have to leave because that does fit your table. What can you do with the 1 eighth? Probably a good idea to do, right? We don't want to mess around with fractions too much because we create more fractions. It's easier if I write this as 1 8 x to the negative 3 dx. What is the integral of x to the negative 3 dx? Can you tell me? x to the negative 2 over negative 2. Negative 2, good. Out of line. Okay, well that is negative 1 over 16x squared. Do you see the negative 1 over 16x squared out of that? Can you make it that far? That's our, our algebra coming back at us. We're going to move our exponent down. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16, but I'm going to put the negative on the top. Make it that negative 1. And then, say it again? Very good. You'll find maybe the better way than moving that up to the top, maybe a little bit easier to see. Would you like to see that one? Different option here. Since you can't really do anything fancy yet, you don't know how to deal with parentheses at all, do you? There's been no such thing as parentheses. Maybe deal with that first and go, oh, well, this is 1 over 8x cubed. Yes? You follow? Then does the 8 move to the top? No. It's just the x to the third. That's the integral of 1 eighth times x to the negative 3. And that gets you right to that step. Can you, can you follow that one as well? So either way you want to do that, I really don't care. But sometimes it's easier to deal with those parentheses first off before you start moving all these pieces around because you have to end up moving it back down to the denominator anyway. In either case, though, we're going to get negative 1 over 16x squared plus c.
Tell me what I found. What is it? It is an integral, yes. It is an integral. A family of what? Functions. Functions, works. Family of functions that does what for us? What does this family of functions do? Solve your initial. What do you mean solve for? Someone over here, tell me what, what, ha what does this family of function, <laughs> I said the wrong word, functions represent for us? Come on, help me out. We've, we've had two ways to represent this. Way number one was, what's an integral or an antiderivative represent? Represents areas. We could consider that as an area because that's an integral, yes. In this context, this one, this is a family of curves such that when I take a derivative of it, it gives me that exact thing. Do you follow? That's what we're representing, a family of curves. How we find one specific curve or one specific function is we use the initial value. Now, this is basically the same idea as me giving you a point before, only I'm not giving you a point explicitly, I'm giving you a point right here like this. I'm saying, I'm not saying what x is, but you should know what x is. What is x here? And y is zero. It says y, y of one is zero. So what am I going to plug in? Well, let's see. It says the initial value for y, the initial value for y is zero. The initial value for x is one plus c. That lets you solve for c. In our case, we'll have zero equals negative one sixteenth. This is kind of nice and easy. In this particular case, you add one sixteenth and you get 1 16th equals C. Substitute that back in. And the exact equation that we're looking for to satisfy not only the differential equation, but the initial value is this. By show of hands, how many feel okay with that one so far? Let's try one more just to make sure you really grasp this. I'll show you an example of uh, how you can do it in actually real life, uh, how this stuff works for you, and then we'll be done for the day. So last one, let's say dy dx is cosine x. Initial value is y of 0 equals 1. This one's going to be nice and quick for us. We'll go quickly through it. Uh, if dy dx equals cosine x, y has to equal the integral of cosine x dx. We, we know that. We know that that is going to undo that derivative. So, hey, can you tell me what's the integral of cosine? Do then think about it before you answer. I don't want anybody to answer in the first two seconds of what you think. Uh, think of the integral of cosine x. Don't say it. What is it? Sine, sine or negative? Positive. Positive sine. Plus c. The plus c is important, right? Hey, if you forget the plus c, that initial value is meaningless, isn't it? You've got to have that plus c to solve for something. So you had to have that. Do you see why it's sine, by the way? Take a derivative of sine, you're going to get cosine. Now we plug some numbers in. Uh, what do we plug in for the y in this case? That's my initial value. Is y 0 or is y 1? Which one? 1. y of 0 gives you 1. The of 0, that's your x. This would be like y of x. That's why I had it right here. y of x equals y sub 0. So our x is 0, our y is 1. How much is sine of 0? Oh boy, some of you are killing me today. How much is sine of 0? It's definitely 0, yeah. 1 equals c. No, you're, you, you guys are right. 1 equals c. So our function that we were looking for is sine of x plus 1. Is it true that the derivative of this is going to still give you cosine x? Is it true that it goes with that initial value? Absolutely. Being that x is 0, that means that y, it would be the y-intercept. So whenever you have the y-intercept, would c always come out to be? The same? It should. it should, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're plugging in 0 for x, it's got to be on that y axis. Special case, I suppose. It's kind of nice. When you think about it, when you do an integral, right, you're always going to have something in terms of x or whatever your variable is, plus some c, which does not have your variable. So that naturally, if you're plugging in 0, everything else go away except for that. 
Would you like to see a real life example? Are any of you in physics? Are any of you going to take physics? Well, good. Do you know that you could build catapults? Yes. Let me do a catapult example. That's what I would take it. I hate <laughs> physics. I mean, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> My teacher was not very good. Not like the teachers we have here. They're good here. Is that useful catapult? You know they're originally intended to shoot cats, that's why it's called a catapult. Just kidding. Um, but that would be pretty fun. <laughs> I don't like cats. Especially when you don't like There's no cat I like. Uh, now let's say you really suck at building a catapult. And you shoot it accidentally straight up in the air, right above your head. Is that a good thing? No. Not with the catapult. Impossible. It's possible. I've seen it happen. <laughs> with a really badly built catapult. Straight up in the air. So let's say you, it accidentally shoots straight up in the air with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. I want to do a few things. I want to find the position function of this. For the projectile, basically. For the height. I want to know what the maximum height is. And I want to know when it's going to hit you in the head. Actually, when it hits the ground, so hit your foot. When will it land on your foot? When's it going to hit the ground? Oh, and let's say one more thing about this. Uh, let's say that it actually shoots straight up with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second, and you're launching it off of a 16-foot platform. So you're up 16 feet, and then you launch it. So maybe not straight up, but just slightly over, so it's going to land on the ground. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Or you move the platform real quick. <laughs> Or maybe your catapult is 16 feet high, so when it starts throwing it, it's at 16 feet. So maybe the, the top of it launches it straight up. Something breaks, I don't know, you messed up. 